got your Bibles, I'm going to be doing a different type of thought. I'm going to try to do more of a devotional type message and rather than a real long sermon. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. I'll begin in verse 1. And Adam knew his wife, Eva's wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. <clears throat> and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt not shalt thou not be accepted. If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt have rule over him. I'm doing a little thought on the unrecognizable man. You're probably wondering what this is about. Well, in verse 5 and 6, after Cain's offering been rejected, we read once again, But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. You know, anger changes a person's countenance, especially when it's unrighteous anger. When you're just downright mad, your countenance changes. You could have... Uh, a great countenance with the Lord, and people could look out at you and say, boy, that guy's a Christian, and then you get mad. People will see a big difference. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? I want to tell a little story. This is a true story. Uh, you may, some may have heard me tell this before, but it's worth repeating again. <laughs> I grew up in a town called Elkins, West Virginia. I'll never forget my dad was part of a water board one time, the Midland Water Board over the area a little outside of Elkins. I'll never forget one Saturday night years ago. I was probably 10 years old at the time, 11 at the most, but I do remember this Saturday night. I don't remember everything that happened, but I remember this. Because him be, well, there was a man out digging a line or something, digging something with a backhoe, and he hit a water line. My dad, you know, my dad, mom, my sister, and I, we were out that night. I don't even remember what we were out for. We done a lot of things on Saturday nights together as a family. This is long before I ever got saved or even knew the Lord. So, you know, I wasn't even saved at the time. But we done a lot of things. Sometimes we go to different restaurants and stuff. I'll never forget this night. This water line broke. <clears throat> you know, because he was part of that Midland Water Board and it was in the area. I think he kind of felt a little obligated to go see what was going on. I called some other members of that water board. And there's one in particular I remember, I'll charitably not say his name because I'm not out to attack him. He's been gone for years and I'm not out to hurt his family in any size, shape, or form. I'll just say he was a businessman. He owned a furniture store and a music store, I believe it was, and had, he sold propane, if I recall correctly. Well, to do, man. Well, that night, they called him, or he drove by, I don't know which it was. When he got there, he was fit to be tied. That's all I'll put it. He was cussing, and you could tell he was very angry. I was a 9, 10-year-old kid, and I looked at him, and boy, it left an impression on me that this man is an angry man, a hothead, and everything else. 
some things happened that I don't even remember. I think they got that taken care of that night. But a few weeks later, there's some some tension rose up in the water board, and my dad and another member of it, you know, they got letters from this man. I use that type of language he used, but he called my dad this other man pretty nasty name. I'll just say that. I will say something. After those two incidents, you make reference to this man's name, I thought of only one thing. He was a hothead. He was angry. He was just an angry man. You, you know, that's just the way I put him because that's all I was used to seeing him do. He had a very successful business. So apparently he didn't yell at all his customers. <laughs> but... Let's fast forward. This is probably around 1969 or 70. Maybe as late as 71, but no later. A few years later, about 1974, I believe it was. My mom and dad, they took off somewhere. And I don't know if my sister was at home then or not. I can't even remember all those details. You're talking... 45 years ago and I my mind just can't remember any detail there's a lot of things I just like to forget about that time I'll leave it there <clears throat> one night while they were gone I can't believe it I really think it was a Thursday night of all things that for some reason I'm having a better I may not remember a lot of other details but sometimes and not always but sometimes it seems like I can remember the day of the week for some reason he came by a man came by a very nice man he was very cordial he I don't know if, this part I don't know if I'm thinking right or not, but it seems like he had his hat in his hand, you know, how some men would hold their hats in their hand, you know. Kind of out of respect, I always thought was. If he didn't, that's okay. I just know he was very cordial, very nice, this man. And just the epitome of a gentleman, if you want me to be truthful. This man asked, is your dad Ward home? And I said, no, no. He said, tell him. And when he said his name, I almost fell and hit the ground because it was that businessman who I always associate being hateful and angry and yelling and screaming. I believe he drove up and started cussing and yelling. I would have known who he was right off the bat, but because he was so cordial, I was just shocked. But now for the lesson. People will perceive you a certain way. You know, if you're always angry or you, you allow yourself in an unguarded moment to get angry, you may have people thinking that Christian is a hothead. Beware. I believe we need to guard our tempers. I believe it is important we guard our tempers. And you know what I believe? I believe the Lord could help us. Remember, He died to save us from our sins. Amen. Romans chapter 6 gives a clue there, or the answer there. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 says, he died to save us from our sins. Or he to save, to save us from our sins. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13, through Christ's strength. We can conquer our tempers. We can keep them under control, keep them check. And I'll tell you one more verse that is really helping me in recent years. Some people don't like this. That's James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Brethren, every one of you be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Sometimes we say, I may not want to hear that guy because I know he's in the wrong. You know, sometimes it pays to listen and hear a person out rather than 
jumping and getting in their face and yelling and screaming. Swift to hear, slow to speak. But most importantly, slow to wrath. Today, would we be unrecognized if somebody would see us in a nice spirit, kind and gentle? Would they say, or would they be so used to us being a nice person, a person that doesn't have a temper? If we do show a bad temper, people will literally say, what a Christian that man is. And we'll disappoint him greatly. We need to think about that, don't we? One last verse. The Lord asked Jonah after the revival of Nineveh, do us thou well to be angry? I think we ought to think about that before we start getting angry. Jonah 4.4, 4, do us thou well to be angry? Once again, James 1, 19, 20. Brethren, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. God bless you.